Tracy looked up to the expectant face of Nightmare Moon. The heavy darkness of the day poured in through the windows, but was thrown back to the corners of the throne room by the goddess's rolling mane. For the first time ever, Trixie didn't lower her eyes when looking at Nightmare Moon's face, though her body was laid on the ground in a pose of worship. It took all of Trixie's willpower to keep the smile off her face. Nightmare Moon looked curiously at the... Uh, prostrated mare, neither anger nor belief, yet coloring her features. She'll believe me this time, Trixie knew. She has to. I can show her proof. Finally, Nightmare Moon spoke down to the teal unicorn. Trixie, I am relieved to hear your words. Trixie held back a sigh of relief knowing it could give her away. You are indeed audacious to assume my captain's guilt, and I am glad to hear your repentance. But for now, let us speak of this rebel base you seem to have stumbled across. The ebony pony stepped delicately down the stairs of her throne, her mane streaming behind her like a torch. Trixie watched her openly, no longer needing to hide behind courtesy and regal poise to avoid her wrath. You claim to hide inside a mountain and openly defend or defied communication with you. Is that right? Yes, your majesty. I used an advanced telepathy spell to make contact before I made assumptions about their allegiances. But they openly mocked me. Naturally, I dispatched a patrol and came back to make a report immediately. Trixie saw Nightmare Moon's brow scrunch up in a mixture of pain and anger, but it quickly sank in the disappointment. I see. I had thought that all traces of the resistance had been put down in Manhattan, but it seems that some ponies clung to outdated ideals. Very well. We shall go and see to this mess. Nightmare Moon strode past Trixie, towards the shadowed door of the throne room. W we Trixie stammered as she crambled to her hooves, falling into steps behind her mistress. But, your majesty, I can handle them perfectly well myself. If you'll just hear out my request for additional power from... Forgive me, Trixie, Nightmare Moon interrupted, without even casting a glance towards the unicorn. But, you must understand, for the first time in almost a year of service... You appear to have shown some sense of responsibility for your actions, and regret when you acted in error. Nightmare Moon's voice remained even, but her mane settled into a low shimmer as she arrived at the door. I'm not coming down to that compost heap to help you. I'm going to find out what you are lying about. With a glimmer of Nightmare Moon's horn, the large doors flew open. Trixie followed her ruler across the hallway, to a window that looked out to the distance. If you're telling the truth, Trixie, then I will grant you all the power you need to crush this insurrection. Nightmare Moon still refused to look at the unicorn below her, as her gaze settled on the distant forest. If, however, you are lying, if you have made even the slightest move against my throne, I have no tolerance for treason, Trixie. And you'd do well to remember that. Trixie gulped as the queen's horn began to glow. My plan is perfect, she told herself, as the world blurred around her. It's a masterful work of uh, subterfuge. I have nothing to worry about. With all the self-assurance she could muster, she attributed her quickening heartbeat to excitement instead of nervousness. Rainbow Dash rose slowly out of the darkness, her mind returning to the real world gradually. She opened her eyes to see a dim wooden ceiling above her, a sight she had come to loathe. Panic set in as she recognized the room around her, the soft bed beneath her, feeling all too familiar. She whipped her head around, and sure enough, bandages encircled her shoulder. No, 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 I'm not spending another three days in here, she yelled, thrashing around in her blankets. Relax, Rainbow Dash. Dash turned her head towards the voice. 
seeing twilight stretched across the ground in front of her. A pencil was held awkwardly in her mouth, and she placed it down before continuing. You aren't even tied down. Rainbow Dash gave her shoulder an experimental lift. Her worries dispelled as she sat up. Gripping the book in her mouth, Twilight marked the page and stood up, coming closer to the Pegasus. Her fears gone, Dash found that the memories of the battle rushing back to her. She felt her body seize up. Twilight! What happened? How did I get here? Where are the other ponies? She reached up to grab her friend, but winced in pain from her shoulder. Twilight put the book down to free her mouth. Grimacing at the aftertaste, she spoke slowly to her friend. Big Macintosh and the other pony dragged you back here, in with a few others. Some of them, I didn't get a good look at them, but there was a lot of blood. Twilight hesitated, and Dash could see that something was troubling her. The whole town went into a frenzy when you guys came back, and when I got to you, I offered to keep watch over you until you woke up. Dash kept fidgeting, glancing this way and that. Twy, there's something very important I need to know. How long ago was I brought in? The question seemed to take Twilight off guard, her blackened eyes widening in confusion. Um, I guess about 30 minutes. Why? Dash braced herself for the forthcoming reaction. Because that group we ran into was a patrol, and one of them escaped. If he made it back and told Trixie that we attacked them, then she won't wait another day before launching her forces. We need to evacuate. Now. Dash smiled, or Twilight smiled, and it was Dash who turned to be confused. She should be worried, she thought suspiciously, or at least surprised. But Twilight's smile seemed off to Dash, and her voice sounded high-strung as she spoke. Oh, that won't be a problem. She all but giggled. We've decided to stay in New Ponyville anyway. What difference does it make whether she attacks in another day or an hour? Dash's suspicion took the confirmation badly. Her stomach dropped in worry. Twilight, are you okay? The change in Twilight's demeanor had occurred quickly, and Dash wondered if she had brought up a sensitive subject. Oh, I'm fine, Dash, she exclaimed, her voice dripping sarcasm. I'm just here looking after my friend while Applejack and Rarity fortify a town of sticks and rocks. She sat down on the edge of the bed with a huff. Hooves crossed her chest. Rarity woke up, and Applejack, she... Gah. I can't even talk about it right now. Dash chalked Twilight's frustration up to the orange mare's stubbornness, focusing on their next step. Though Twilight just glanced at the wall away from her, Dash looked at her sloshed form. Well, we can't attack him anymore, but I'm surprised they don't want to evacuate. She tapped her chin pensively. So, what are you going to recommend to them? I doubt they'll let me back in there after I stormed out like that. Twilight grunted and laughed again. <laughs> you stormed out? Dash, I'm honestly surprised they didn't have me arrested after I left that room. Dash's jaw dropped. You mean you walked out too? Over what? Twilight opened her mouth to respond, but Dash shook her head. Damn, now neither of us can carry any weight with rarity. What were you thinking, Twy? Twilight drew back, a hoof coming up across her chest defensively. What was I? Dash, you walked out first, and then you just trotted outside and attacked the Royal Guard. Twilight's voice was more uh, incredulously then offended, but Dash deflated swiftly under her voice. No, wait, I didn't mean... Dash hesitated, trying to find the right words. Er, I'm sorry, Twy. I guess I'm just mad that after everything that happened now, the only thing we have to show for it is not having any control over what happens next. Her shoulders drooped. We just have to sit here and wait for Trixie to attack. Both ponies sat in silence. Dash's face contorted, and she opened her mouth to speak. More than once, but never uttered a word. Twilight simply sat on the edge of the bed, looking down at her friend. Dash turned her eyes upwards, in time to see Twilight lift a hoof, in he hesitatingly. Dash, 
She began, her face already drawing back. We don't... We don't have to stay here, you know. Dash was confused for a moment before Twilight's meaning sank in. You mean, leave New Ponyville? Her mouth dropped open. Twilight! Our friends are here! She exclaimed, stammering about the implications. How can you even just that? Twilight hadn't been sure of what to expect from Dash, but this was certainly a possibility. Please, just listen. She pleaded with hooves together. I know that every pony we really know is here or dead, but these aren't our friends. Dash drew herself back from interrupting, albeit barely. Rainbow, our friends are back home in our Ponyville. This is a very, literally, a different world, a parallel universe, and by definition that means that some things are different. She held her hooves open to gesture to the room around her. We've both seen the way that Rarity and Applejack behave, towards us and the town. Whatever happened that night that made the elements of Harmony fail, it could have been either from, from either one of them, not embodying their elements, and we both see that none of our friends embody them anymore. So we should just abandon them, replied Rainbow Dash. Her voice was calm and questioning, not at all what she expected. I should be angry, she wondered at herself. I was a moment ago. Why aren't I anymore? Well, we're not really... Twilight trailed off, looking down guiltily. I mean... We're not even supposed to be here in the first place, right? We only got here by mistake. Dash kept her face impassive, and Twilight tried a different argument, her words gaining strength as she continued. Dash, I want to help every pony, believe me, but... By Celestia, look around, Rainbow. What is there to save here? Rainbow Dash opened her mouth to reply trusting her anger to supply the words her mind couldn't find. But nothing came out, and her face scrunched up in confusion. No, she thought. This goes against everything I stand for. They are still my friends. This is still Ponyville. And with a flash, Dash knew why she couldn't be angry. Deep inside of her, her sense of loyalty burned at her and begged her to stay. But on top of that sense of duty, were days and days of watching ponies suffer, days of never-ending darkness and rot, watching her friends lie and kill and sacrifice innocence for nothing. What do I have left to be loyal to? Twilight took Dash's silence to mean that she was on the fence about the idea, and continued with her plan. We could leave tonight, she muttered, afraid to da uh, break Dash's thoughts. We know where at least one escape tunnel lies, the one that Catherine escaped from. We could make our way to one of the main cities and lie low until my magic returns, and I can find a way home. Dash remained silent, and Twilight looked towards her face. The Zion Pegasus refused to meet her eyes, and her, haste, and her face held a sadness that Twilight had never seen in her friend before. Please, begged Twilight, her voice soft in the silent room. We don't have to die here. Not for this. Twilight realized that her hooves were clasped together, and she slowly drew them apart and lay back. Very slowly, Dash lifted her head to look at Twilight in the eyes, which Twilight could tell were moist around the same edges. I don't want to do this, she wanted to add, but if you saw Rarity ignore common sense, if I had time to explain what Applejack did, I know you'd agree. She held her words, however, as Dash opened her mouth. Twilight, she began as a tear rolled down her cheek. I'm sorry. I can't leave. Her head dropped into her chest, and Twilight could hear a sob coming from her friend. I wish I could, she continued in a muffled voice. But it goes against everything I know. She looked up, her eyes now puffy with tears. Ever since I saw Fluttershy killing those animals, I've only cared about protecting you. You're right. I don't owe them anything, but I just can't. Even if they aren't our real friends, even if this isn't Ponyville anymore. I'm not ready to give up on them. Not yet. 
Nesha's head dropped again, and Twilight felt like a lead weight sat on her shoulders. I am sorry, Dash. She found herself saying suddenly, falling forward and throwing her hooves around the mare's shoulders. I didn't mean to make you choose between me and every pony else. She felt a pair of hooves embrace her back, tentatively. If you aren't leaving, neither am I. Both mares lay in the bed as their tears subsided, each racked by the occasional sob. Dash's embrace grew tighter over the course of a few minutes, and Twilight gave a final squeeze to her hug before drawing away. That puts us back at square one, moped Twilight as she sat up. We can't do anything except for wait to Trixie to attack at any moment. Maybe... Dash hinted, placing a hoof on her chin. Twilight perked up. Dash appeared to be deep in thought, but Twilight was desperate for good news. Rainbow, is there something you haven't told me? She asked, leaning forward. When you saw me being brought in, you said there were a few other ponies, right? Dash ventured, her hopes slowly rising. Yeah, but I didn't get a good look at them. I think the entire town was trying to cram into that tiny bridge. Did you see how many of them there were? Twilight thought for a moment. Well, there were the two ponies walking, and four stretchers with you on one of them. So, six total, I guess. She looked at her friend, confused by this line of questioning. Dash smiled, her grin splitting her face from ear to ear. Twilight, I only went out there with four ponies. Twilight hesitated. So then... Who was the sixth one? She asked slowly, her mind trying to race ahead and guess the answer. You reminded me just now when you were talking about escaping, Dash said as she sat up and flexed her wings. It wasn't just the royal guard out there. The captain was showing them the entrance to New Ponyville. Twilight found herself scrambling to keep her balance as Dash kept out of, leapt out of bed, knocking Twilight off in the process. Regaining her composure, she cocked her head to the side. Rainbow Dash, the captain didn't want to fight us even after Spitfire died, she said incredulously, as Dash shook life back into her limbs. Why would she go back on that now? I don't know, answered Dash, as she lifted herself experimentally off the ground. Maybe she didn't, but that sure is what it looked like. She let herself fall to the ground, giving a satisfying smile as every body part checked out. But, if she's anything like me, she doesn't want to see every pony here die either. What if I go try to talking to her? Rainbow Dash, that's brilliant! Twilight exclaimed. She began prancing between the bed and the door, thinking out loud. If these ponies stay here, they all die. But if you can convince the captain to help us, and I can convince the town to stop following Rarity, then maybe we can escape before Trixie surrounds us. She stopped and smacked one of her hooves in the other, staring at Dash. We have to work fast, though. You go to the captain, and I'll go to the town square. It was Dash's turn to be surprised. Wait, how are you going to convince everybody to stop following the mayor who saved their lives? Dash questioned as she narrowed her eyes. Because. I know something they don't. Twilight replied, her voice wavering slightly. Applejack lied about the resistance, and if every pony finds out about it, then Rarity and Applejack won't be leading any pony. Mesh's head dropped, but part of it wasn't very alarmed. She honestly felt more disappointed by the continuing trends of her friends falling than surprised. A realization that worried her deeply. I see, she stated, simply as she trotted towards the door. In that case, we better get a move on. Okay, Dash. Twilight replied as torchlight flooded the doorway. The two mares stood side by side as the empty street stretched out before them, each with their own mission. Twilight tried to ignore her own warnings as the possible outcomes of telling the town the truth assaulted her imagination. And a quick glance towards Dash revealed that she was very similarly lost in thought. The cyan mare looked back and Twilight realized she had been staring. Carefully making her face impassive, Dash nodded 
and flexed her wings. Good luck, Twy. Twy resisted the urge to hug her friend again, knowing that she had to be strong on her own for the coming trial. Thanks, Dash, she answered. She could only imagine what Dash must be going through, having to ask a twisted version of herself for help. And you too, she added belatedly as the mare left the ground, disappearing into the darkness above. With a sigh, Twilight turned towards the street before her. With the whole town against her and Dash gone, her only companions as she walked towards the sound center were the clops of her hooves and the silence between their echoes.